Okay, we are going to uh, continue with assignment four, the cloud creature. And just so I can show you how important setting something up is, we're going to start from the beginning again. So I just go to Photopea, and what I'm going to open from my computer is my second assignment, PNG, the thing I cut out. And uploaded as a PNG, which means that it is transparent. Right? So it's helping us to remember uh, the different file formats. So I have this PNG here. I have the updated one with the tail. I'm going to go ahead and open that with Photoshop. And what's so good about paying attention to resolution and paying attention to like saving your work is because we've opened it in PhotoP as a PNG, you'll notice the, the gray grid behind it, which means there's no pixels there. It's empty space. And then because we are paying attention to resolution when we set it up, the image size for it is already over a thousand pixels in each direction. And that's what we want. Let's see. So it's it's the right size for what we want. Now I'm going to create a new file, a brand new file in PhotoP. And this is the first assignment we've done this for, because we're going to make a cloud of this creature. So the new file we're going to call, and then giving clear names is important, especially when working in PhotoP, is that it will always save to our downloads. And we want to then take it out of our downloads and move it into the folder. And it will keep um, resaving a new version each time we save. So now I want to go to image size because I didn't pay much attention to that as I was setting up the new, the new um, format. But we can always go to image size and actually change the number of pixels. So what I'm going to do is change that to inches. And I want it to be around 11 by 14 inches. So because my creature is a little bit wider than he is tall, I'm going to make the width 14 inches and the height 11. And if I was using Photoshop instead of PhotoP, I would make the DPI, you know, what is actually the, the pixels per inch. I would make that 350 because that's my preferred working resolution. I call it a studio resolution for printing because a printing standard resolution is 300 pixels per inch. But because PhotoP starts to work really slowly when we work that high, at least on my laptop, we are working at screen resolution. So it looks really good on computer screens, on TV screens, but can't be printed all that large. So I'm going to keep it at 72 pixels per inch. And that's standard design for all websites. Okay. I have resample checked because I made changes, but notice how it won't let me change the width unless I uncheck the uh, padlock because the padlock locks it into a certain proportion. So I don't want 11 by 19. I want 11 by 14. And to do that, I need to uncheck the padlock and have resample checked. Okay, so now I've got 11 by 14 by 72 pixels per inch. And 14 is basically 1,000 pixels at 72 pixels per inch. So that means that this guy, who I'm now going to load onto this, will automatically kind of fill it up. Because remember, he is, my creature is already around a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels. Okay. So I'm going to say file, open, and place. And then I use that same PNG from assignment two to place.
And that actually looks like a pretty good placement, but I could always uh, tilt it at this point. I could scale it a little differently. I could place it a little off center if I want. And then just, I hit return and it places it. Notice that it's still a smart object. So I'm not able to erase away or directly change the pixels. I can distort it, I can place it, I can transform it, but I wanna keep it as a smart object. Okay, and then notice as well that I have a blank white background behind it. So I can see that my creature layer has no empty space. Now I need another element to bring in, and that element is going to be the clouds. Right. So I'm gonna to go to my favorite Creative Commons, and I'm going to just search for cloud, and I'm just gonna say big as well, because I know there's a lot of clouds. Uh, but you see the addition of big doesn't give me pure cloud, so I'm just gonna look for cloud. And generally it will show you uh, the most recent ones first. Now, just like in, in Google images, you have some options. So I can just look at photos. I can just look at size, but you can actually put in your exact width here. But I don't need to do that because if it's on Pixabay, it means everything is at least a thousand pixels. And I can just find, you know, a big cloud to use. I think I used this one in the last demo. I might have grabbed that one. All of these will be useful. I think I used that one. But I can also scroll past the first few pages. But we're going to be altering this reference a whole lot. So I'll try to find something from the second page now. Or hey, just to be a deep cut, maybe from the third page. Because the nice thing about clouds, even though they have a lot of color information, a lot of edge information, as long as it's a decent photo, it's okay to soften them a little bit. Because clouds are constantly being pulled by the wind, their edges do soften somewhat. Okay, so these are some good clouds I might be able to use. I'm going to open that in a new tab. But I need first just a big overall texture of cloud. And it really is going to define your light direction. So I don't like to use anything that's too funky looking. But I will go for more backlit clouds. I think that's a better option than, say, something like this or this, because these are just really, really particular. And it would be hard to find other clouds to uh, composite into that. And the whole goal is to make it believable. But here, I have enough big cloud reference here I can use to cut my creature out. So I'm going to pick the largest possible, download it. I am going to be appreciative, but take full advantage of the free for commercial use with no attribution and I don't have to do anything because that artist put it up on Pixabay and agreed to that licensing. So it's a very generous thing and if you like Pixabay and you like what it offers I encourage you to maybe post some of your own images and share some of your own images. Make sure that you have the copyrights to them but that they're you know clearly your images but you can offer them up. That's what, where I think the internet kind of works best. We're sharing, sharing resources freely. Okay. There's also some nice clouds here. They're just very, very soft. So I might go ahead and download that. Okay. So where can I find all those? They're in my downloads folder.
I'm going to go ahead and open that up. And it's always good to arrange a little bit. So I'm going to drag these into my assignment four folder. Try to keep all the references in one place. So add those to the references I had downloaded before. And all of these are from Pixabay. And I know that they're all pretty good quality. So what should I cut it out of? Let's see. I think I actually might want to cut it out of this one. So I go back to my browser where I have Photo P open. Ah. Come on. There we go. And I'm going to open in place. One of my big cloud references. So that's going to be in my assignment four folder because I am so nicely organized. And now I have other clouds I can use as well for later for compositing on top because this is just going to give me kind of the, the base layer. Okay, we have the question, when is the cloud assignment? I think probably due. So I will um, address that. It's, it's due today. We're going to try to get it done by between 11.30 and noon. So we have roughly an hour to kind of knock this out which is an ambitious timeline, but we can do it. You just have to not be too self-critical. Okay, so with this cloud, I bring it in and I'm gonna stretch it. Stretchy, 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 just like rolling dough. And I want the cloud, I'm gonna use this kind of darker overcast cloud. I want it to fully cover my creature. And the cloud comes with its own light source. In fact, I might change that light source a little bit so it's easier to composite other clouds. So I'm going to select that, duplicate just that part of the cloud, delete the smart layer so that I can hit Control T. Oh, I'm on the wrong layer though. So I can hit Control T, right click, and then flip that cloud vertically. And see, maybe I like that. Or I can flip it 180 degrees. <coughs> I like that. So I've already altered my cloud reference a little bit. Now I'm going to go to the layer behind and use my magic wand selection tool, which is right underneath the lasso, but the last one in the drawer. And then in the options for it, I'm going to feather it with two pixels. So it just softens the selection a little bit. A tolerance of 29 is fine. Uh, the default tolerance for Photoshop is 32. So I always kind of think of that as a default. I want anti-alias and I want contiguous unchecked. Right now I just click on the empty space around my creature. But notice, even though I have the cloud layer turned off, I was selected on the cloud layer. So it accidentally selected within the cloud layer. So I have to deselect. So I use Control D to deselect, or I can use a lasso. And I go to my creature layer, make sure that layer is selected, and I use my magic wand. And then I. Your mic went out. Okay. So I use my magic wand. and I select the layer or the, uh, the space around my creature. Then I move to my cloud layer, turn it on. Then I s go up to my select options in Photo P and say select the inverse, the opposite 